one thing I ask, one thing I seek, is, is to, to live, live in the house of the Lord. Every breath, every word, every thought, every moment, every, every minute, minute, every day. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. 1,440 minutes. All for God's glory. All right, 1440, we're going to play Never Have I Ever Christmas, Christmas Edition. edition. Mm -hmm. Shoot. You want to start it off? I'll start it off. Never Have I Ever Ate Yellow Snow. Do the snow cones count, though? I don't know, man. I don't know. Did it taste good? It was flavored. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this one. No, that's uh, creepy. No, that, yeah, I've never done that. So Never Have I Ever Stolen from Somebody Else's Stocking. Y'all done that? So, Any heathens here? I said, nah, not me, no, not, not me. Not y'all, not y'all. Not me. Not I mean, my stock was good, though. I had, didn't have reason yeah. to. No, same here, man. Blessed up, blessed up. In Jesus' name, what about you? Never have I ever missed Christmas. Hey, I don't, yeah. No, yeah. I haven't either. Yeah, I don't think I missed Christmas. I haven't it's either. It's not like the 25th, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. All right, <laughs> we're going to go to Pastor Quest and Catherine uh -huh. now. They have a sermon. Get this in the same line of what we're doing here. Never have I ever left a, this sounds like a wrap. Never have okay. I ever left a Christmas present under the tree unwrapped. Whew. Now that's a wrap. What are you leaving under the tree wrapped from Jesus? Ooh, Ooh. shalom. Ooh. It's time for the unexpected. Unexpected. All right, Peyton is going to bring Sorry. us Another card. Card. Thank you, baby. <clears throat> <clears throat> Give the reindeer dasher a pep talk. He hasn't been pulling his weight lately. You know what? <laughs> All right. All right, fine. No. So, so just now be prepared. You want to be the reindeer dasher? I'm going to give you a pep talk of how you're not doing things right. Here we go. I don't know what I signed up for. <laughs> reindeer dasher. Just not feeling good. How? Right. Is it that you cannot pick up it's just the leaves? You grab the rake like everyone else. Oh, what? <laughs> did. What's up, 1440 friends and family? Welcome back to week two of our short uh, but Christmas series, Jesus Unwrapped. Listen, last week we talked about and laid a foundation for who Jesus is, mm -hmm. of course, but why he came. We talked about uh, his birth a little bit. We're going to talk more about his birth today uh, because the Christmas season is all about the birth of yes. Jesus, the reason for the season. You know, I, I keep calling him the gift that keeps on giving. There's so much to Jesus than simply a man or right. he came so that I could go to heaven one day. Yes and yes, but there's so much more to Jesus than I think we often realize. Yeah. And so let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, today in week two, John chapter three and verse 16 says this, for God so loved the world, the world meaning his creation, yep. the world meaning his people, meaning you and I, for mm -hmm. God so loved you and I that he gave, he gave, he gave his son. We're talking about Jesus. You know, God loves you and I so much that he was willing to give up, one translation says, I believe we read last week, but give up his son. Now listen, yeah. you, you can't give something you don't currently possess. And so what we're seeing here is a supernatural love transfer. Yeah. A supernatural love transaction between God the Father and his creation mm -hmm. by giving us Jesus, the gift of Jesus to his people. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now listen, I don't think it's any mistake that God gave us his son. Yeah. I think God knows why. I think God knows why mm -hmm. we needed it. I believe that I, I believe God knows why you need his son yes. today. I love this because, you know, last week we gave the example and I just kind of want to open up uh, this week with it again. You know, Christmas time, everybody's opening gifts under the tree, yeah. but never ever have I ever walked away from the Christmas tree with gifts under it still. Yeah. In other words, we've all opened up our gifts. Man, I've got this from dad. I got this from mom, un uncle, whoever, and I give this to my brother and you, we're opening up our gifts and there's mm -hmm. like four or five still under the tree. And it's kind of like, you know what? I think I'm d done. Like I've got, I've got gifts over here. Like we're, I'm set, we're good. Nobody leaves gifts under the tree. Yeah. But unfortunately, and I think so many times, you and I, too often, we're not walking out and unwrapping all yeah. of the gifts 
within the gift that is Jesus. And so we're going to talk so about that good. a little bit more today. Yeah, we're going to get so into good. some more scripture. We are. We're going to get into I some more it. scripture. But, you know, I think just to echo what Pastor Quest said, I was I, I was prompted to look this up in the Passion Translation. I'm glad you did. Um, and I love how it puts it. It says, for this is how much God loved love the world. It. This is how much. And last week I said something, and I want to remind you, and I want to say this again. Uh, you determine the value of something by the price that you're willing to pay so for it. So good. Right? So uh, a diamond ring is valuable, right? Because people are willing to pay thousands and thousands That's right. of dollars for it. That's, That's right. what ascribes it its value. And God thought you were so valuable to him. And that's, I think, one of the most important things to remember as we are navigating this holiday season um, is just yeah. to remember that God values you, that he valued you, that you were um, a gift to him, that you are his delight. Yeah. Um, and he thought you were so important that he was willing to pay the ultimate price. So it says th that he loved the world so much, he gave his one and only unique son as a gift. So now everyone who believes in him will never perish, but experience everlasting life. And then verse 17, we read it last week. God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but mm -hmm. to be its savior and rescue it. That's great. And so Jesus, we know he came into the world given by God to rescue us, to save us. But also when we talked about this, we touched on it a little last week to provide so much more than just mere salvation, to provide so much yeah. more than just merely a ticket to heaven, but to provide an abundant life for us to yeah. live in. And that's so a good. truly powerful gift. And I think it's important that we recognize that. You know, it's easy to, to look at the physical presence under the tree, the physical things that we make our, our wish list, right? Yeah. Our Christmas list, things that we want for Christmas. But I think it's important to, to look at the list, yeah. so to speak, yeah, of right. what Jesus is to us, yeah. the gift that Jesus is to us, the things that we have in him. And so uh, this week, you know, last week we talked about Mary. We talked about when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary and tells her that she's gonna be bearing the Messiah, the son of the most high God um, and her response of faith to uh, what Gabriel decreed when she said, be it done unto me um, according to what you have so spoken. Yeah. And, and us, when we let that be our faith response, be it done unto us what you have spoken, the power that that holds. She was all in. She was, she was all, all in. in. And I want to read, uh, you know, we read that last week. Now we're going to go actually flip over one chapter to Luke chapter two. And we're going to look at the actual account of the birth of Jesus. And so if you start in verse one, it says, in those days it occurred that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole Roman empire should be registered. Most of us would skip that verse. Yeah, we know that's important. Great, awesome, census is important. Awesome, great. But I wanna, I wanna turn your attention to something. Yeah. The Lord will maneuver the natural to accomplish yeah. his will. Every plan of God in your life is divinely orchestrated. That's right. Right here, even in just this very first verse about the Caesar Augustus decree that there was gonna be a census. God maneuvered the mind and the heart of the government, of the, the system, of the political leader of that time in order to accomplish his will. And that right now, especially in this season of the world, 2020, everything going on in our nation, it's important that right there is a nugget for somebody that God is able to maneuver. And I think there's another verse in Proverbs that says he maneuvers the hearts of kings mm -hmm. and leaders according to his will and his plan. That's right. And so right there, we see that God is already divinely orchestrating this, um, uh, birth of his son yes. to fulfill the prophecy in Micah chapter five that says that he would be born in a town called Bethlehem. So verse two, it says, this was the first enrollment and it was made when Quirinius, don't name your baby that, uh, <laughs> was governor of Syria. Verse three, and all the people were going to be registered each to his own city or town. And so Joseph went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the town of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and the family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his, his engaged wife, who was about to become a mother. And we know she was about to become a mother to Jesus. Mm. And while they were there, the time came 
for her delivery, verse seven. And she gave birth to her son, her firstborn, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room or place for them in the inn. And in that vicinity, there were shepherds living out under the open sky in the field, watching in shifts over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone all about them and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the town of David, a savior who is Christ, the anointed one the Lord. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. You will find mm -hmm. after searching a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And then suddenly there appeared with the angel, an army of the troops of heaven, a heavenly knighthood, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among men with whom he is well pleased, men of goodwill of his favor. And it keeps going. Um, and we know that that the shepherds go and they and they find Jesus there. And something mm -hmm. that always sh is, is so striking to me, Pastor Quest, about this story yeah. is the humility in which yeah. Jesus entered the world. Um, and I, I don't know, that just was, was sticking out to me as I was reading that. You know, we read last week in Luke chapter one, uh, the angel Gabriel, when he told Mary, who was the very first person to hear about the coming of the Messiah, about the, he says, yeah. you're going to call him Jesus. This is the very first time his name is mentioned, right, in the in the yeah. Bible. He's prophesied about for ages, but this is the first time that Jesus is is on the scene. He's coming into, into the world and, you know, the angel prophesies he's going to be great. His kingdom will have no end. He'll reign for yeah. ages to come. And then here we see that the birth of Jesus is humble. You know, he's born in a small town. There's no room for him. I used to do kids mm -hmm. ministry and I, I used to love to tell this story mm -hmm. because, you know, Mary's like, Joseph, <laughs> the baby's coming. And Joseph is frantically running, knocking on doors. Uh -huh. You know, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Yeah, I right, and finally they find this cave. Many scholars say it was a cave. Uh, where they were keeping animals. And that was the place that was mm -hmm. made for Jesus to be born. Yeah. And I think it's important to note that Jesus was born in the most humble of circumstances, yeah. you know? And um, I, I don't know, I think a lot of times our greatest gifts yeah. don't always look like what yeah. we thought. Right? right? The people of that day thought that the Messiah was gonna come That's and he was right. gonna rule and he was gonna reign and he was gonna like get this army and they were gonna yeah. overthrow the Roman empire. And it was gonna be this big, uh, you know, political yeah. governmental shift, right? Uh, but we know that Jesus's kingdom was so much higher than that. Jesus was never to anybody from the very start, That's right. never to anybody what they thought he would be. Um, and you I know, think the funny. same can be true for Jesus us. Jesus was rejected hours before he was even born. Yeah we are yeah. carriers of that good yeah. news. Yeah. You know, there's so much, there's so much to unpack here, but just that we're carriers of that good news. And, um, you know, he was humbled. He was sent as a baby, the most high God, yeah. who always has been, always was dwelling with the yeah. Father and the yeah. Holy Spirit, right? We know in Genesis chapter one, God said, let us make man in our image. The yeah. us and our, in that phrase, yeah. is referring to the fact that Jesus was there with his Father. So good. All right, 1440, today we're gonna to be praying for people who are alone on Christmas. So I'm gonna kick it over to Isaac Arp, who's gonna lead us in prayer today. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you right now for, for everybody watching uh, this broadcast, that, that they'll just be hit with the, with the peace of God and the love of God in a way they've never experienced before. That, that, that God will be in their midst, that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will be, will be our 1440 students' friend, that they'll, that they'll not be alone, that they'll be encouraged and uplifted during the season that they'll just, they'll just know what, what it's like to have a family in the body of Christ, to know what it's like to just be happy and to just have the joy always on the inside of them because Jesus is gonna be with them. Remember that if, if, if you don't have family, come to the church, come to Eagle Mountain Ishnassel Church on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. We want to be your family, we want to get to know you, and we want to become family. So just come on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. And I think that's really, really the point is he is the greatest gift yeah. we've ever received. I love looking at the way the three wise men, yep. if you will, we've mm -hmm. always called them, right? 
their response to Jesus yeah. and the people's response to Jesus. You see, really the truth is, is you see two responses. You see a political agenda to end Jesus based on prophecy mm -hmm. because of fear. Mm -hmm. And then you see people who are like, yes, yes, he's coming. We know this is him. We know what's going on. And you see the response. And so really what we're talking about today is not only the gift within Jesus, the gift that right. keeps on giving, but your response, response. Mm -hmm. to that gift. I love this. You know, my dad uh, told this story and I thought it was so funny. It was just an example that he uh, gave when he was ministering on a very similar topic. And, uh, you know, imagine being gifted with tickets to your favorite baseball team. All right, for me, Dodgers, baby. Dodgers, <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm from Southern California, so it's all Dodgers. However, I'm sold out. I'm a Texan now, yes, so go Rangers. Globe Life Stadium, <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, but imagine getting tickets to Rangers and I get to go finally see the Rangers at Globe Life yeah. Stadium and uh, and they're playing the Angels, right? So I'll give some kind of SoCal reference, okay? Yeah. So they're playing the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. And just imagine, you've got tickets. Now these aren't tickets to just get into the field right. and enjoy the game from any old seats. These tickets are a package deal. Nice. Okay, so these tickets get you food, they get you good seating, they get you the club access, they get you free this, they get you access to this. It would be so bizarre if me having been given those tickets went into the game, sat up way on the top, top, top row and just, <laughs> it's cold out here. I'm just not happy with this game. I just don't like it. I'm hungry. Yeah. And what we forget so many times is it's the same thing with how we respond to the gifts yes. within the package that is, I know it's silly, but the package that really is Jesus. And what you don't realize is that so many of us are going through life, mm -hmm. complaining about things, going through things, and you don't realize that the very answer you need to that yeah. thing you're frustrated yeah. with came with your package. Right. That be Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so, no matter what it is, whether it's sickness and disease. Now, listen, we're not talking about the cross yet. We're just talking about the package that is Jesus, that gift. Listen, God knew what you were going to need today, yeah. right now, which is why he gave you Jesus. Mm -hmm. God knew what you were gonna deal with, why? He gave you Jesus because he knew you were gonna, I think it's so important that we remember yeah. that there isn't an aspect of Jesus, the life of Jesus, God our provider. If I didn't need God our provider, why would Jesus have made that an aspect? Right. Why would God have made that an aspect of Jesus? Yeah. So think about so that. Good. So think about that. Next time you get frustrated, next time you're consumed with your day, it's so important that you bring Jesus into the mix yeah. because he's so much more than that one thing we might label him. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't know about you. I've been in, I've been I've driven in cars that have heated steering wheels. Yes. I'm talking like swanked out nice cars, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, heated steering and nice leather and it's got the right. whole deal. I wouldn't sit in that car and go, my hands are cold. Right, and Just not use it. Bro, hit the heat, mm -hmm. man, my hands are nice. And yeah. You have access to things. So many of us have access to things mm -hmm. in Jesus and a life in Christ that yeah. we're not taking And that's of. the job of the Holy Spirit that's is right. to reveal to us the things that we don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I used this uh, illustration yesterday <laughs> in middle school, we were talking about an iPhone. Yeah. Right? And your yeah. iPhone constantly needs to be updated. And if you go into the little settings icon of yeah. your iPhone, yeah. there it, you could scroll for days of all these different settings that you could change and manipulate. Yeah. And you click on your display and then there's 10 more settings that mm -hmm. you can determine for the display of your iPhone. That's right. Or your ringtones. So many options, so many things. But we all know that there's that there's been that grandma in our lives who has no idea how to use it. She's got this <laughs> awesome, you know, tricked out iPhone, but doesn't know how to use any of the feature that it, it contains. And mm -hmm. that's exactly the same way it is with Jesus. Um, you know, there's so much in him and it's up to us mm -hmm. to unwrap that's right. what that is. It's up to us to discover what is actually found in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And you know, Pastor Quest, a couple it. of things I thought of while you were talking, um, you know, I think a lot of people think that with us being a word of faith church, with us being a word of faith youth group, that that means that we are trying to work, we, that we are yeah. works based, that we are sitting here trying to make God do things. We're trying to make God provide for us. We're trying to make God heal us. That if we just pray enough right. and read our Bible sure. enough and, you know, 
just really grit our teeth and go for it, that, that's mm -hmm. gonna move God's hand in our situation. Right. And I think people are so misled when they look at Word of Faith or when they yeah. look at, you know, they coin it, you know, the prosperity gospel. When they look at um, this church, they're so misled because we're not trying to conjure up anything. That's right. We're not trying to get God to do anything. Why? Because God sent his son Jesus that's and right. when Jesus died, that's what this is what Christmas is all about, right? And Christmas is coming up this week. This is what Christmas is all about. God sent Jesus and when Jesus paid the ultimate price at Calvary for our sins, he did everything that yeah. he determined he was going to do. Exactly everything right. he needed to everything. do. He doesn't have to go to the cross every time someone new gets saved. He doesn't have to go to the cross and get whipped again every single time someone needs healing, mm -hmm. right? He did it once and for, for all. all for all of us. And so Jesus has already paid so the price good. for that healing. He's already paid the price for that provision. He's already paid the price for your restoration in your relationships or for your freedom from anxiety or depression. He's already done all of those things. And we've been talking about that these gifts are what are found in That's Jesus. It. And so we're not sitting here trying to make God do something because Jesus did it all. And that is why he's such a great gift. Yeah. Uh, we're simply laying hold of with our faith. That's exactly right. Laying hold of what's already been provided for us. And I think that's important to remember. The other thing that came to me while you were talking, and I just want to mention this is, you know, last week we read in Luke chapter one, Mary says, be it done unto me, mm -hmm. as you have said. Yeah. So right there, there is a verbal, there's ver this verbal consent. There's this verbal, okay, I believe what you've said is going to happen. Yeah. And that's the first step. And that's important for every believer to say that, you know, be it done unto me. But then there's the follow through. And, you know, Pastor Quest that's is it. talking about receiving, right? Mm -hmm. He's talking about how you can put a gift under, under the tree, you can get those baseball tickets, but if you don't receive that gift, if you don't open it up, you don't put it to use in your life, it's not gonna do you any good. It'll that's just right. sit there under the tree. Right. The same is true with what Jesus has done for us. He paid it all, he provided all of these things, but it's us, up to us that's to right. receive. Yeah. So why do I bring that back around to Mary? That's good. Because it, it was one thing for Mary to say, yes, be it done unto me, but it's another Fine. thing. She raised him. Mm -hmm. It was another thing to follow through. It was another thing to receive that baby to give birth to that baby, to take care of that baby, and to understand the weightiness mm -hmm. of what that meant. That's and I don't good. know why the Holy, I just feel like the Holy Spirit's putting that emphasis on Mary, but I think it's important. She understood, she knew that this was the Son of God. Could you imagine, you know, you have children mm -hmm. and you feel the weight of that responsibility oh, yeah. mm -hmm. to raise up that child and, you know, the fear of the Lord, to take care of that child, to yeah. provide every one of its needs. Can you imagine the added weight knowing that your child, the baby that you mm -hmm. have in your arms, cue Mary, did you know, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like to understand that the baby that you're holding is the son of God, is the Messiah, came to die for the sins of the world. You know, I think it's amazing that not only did Mary verbally, um, you know, so just say, yes, Lord, be it done unto me, yeah. according yeah. to your will, but she also, Put, got to work. She got to work. She, she, did, she did what she had to do to fully receive that gift, to fully enter into the promise of what God had said that, that that baby was for. And in the same way with Jesus in our lives, in the same way, we can't only just say, yes, Jesus is Lord, thank you for saving yeah. me, amen. Yeah. And yeah, Jesus is the reason for the season. But we have to actually come to a place of understanding in our lives that Okay, now that we've consented, Lord, be, be it done That's unto right. me, now we gotta walk it out. Now we gotta walk out this life of faith. Now we gotta take this gift of Jesus and actually use yeah. him, actually yeah. integrate him into every part of our lives, into our families, right. into our sports, into our schools, into our relationships, yeah. into our friendships, into our youth group. We have to take this gift that Jesus is and we have to receive him fully. And so that's our challenge to you this week as we have uh, the celebration of Christmas. Uh, you know, yes, enjoy your time with your family. Yes, enjoy the celebration, the good food, the good conversation, uh, the presents under the tree on yes. Christmas morning but most importantly, remember the gift that has been given to you uh, that is greater than any gift you will ever receive. And that That's is right. the gift of Jesus Christ and everything that is found in him. Yep. So go and be blessed this week. Have a very Merry Christmas and we will see you all next time. So what do you think we should get Jesus for his birthday? Uh, I was thinking Gold? A, a pat, no. No, a pacifier, a ma Keep going. A manger, some baby food, gold? you know. No, we, what's a baby gonna do with gold? 
Use it for teething? Speaking of teething, we need to get one of those things. Teething ring. Gold? Stop throwing gold at me. We're not, we're not getting gold. Why not? Because of what, what I just said before. What's a baby going to do with gold? Long-term goals. Long-term. Is he going to be a baby forever? Wrong. No. Go. Also, oh, we should get some fragrance into mirror. All right, let's go. So my little name's Corinius. OK. That's and, not uh, bad. Uh, you I pick your head up. That's you got a great cheap. first name. You got a great nickname. I you do. got a great last name. I do. Corinius, I no do. one's ever even going to see it. Yeah, except yeah. Except you no just told the world. That. Yeah. Except you just told the world. Oh, I guess I did. It's but okay. That's OK. It's OK, because we love you. Isaac, Coach, Corinius Hart. Thank you, Jesus. And remember, you were created on a purpose, on for a purpose. purpose. Go live on purpose.